So, hey, everybody. What's up? Welcome back. What's up, Michael? Man, good to see you, Gabe. This Great. Is a, this is a good one here, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, we're excited. Um, as many of you already know, we've had Gus Lopez on the show before showing us, honestly, the best you know, screen use collection out there and vintage. I mean, you guys know Gus and you've seen his, his collection before and it is just one of the best out there. So it's, it's really an honor to, to have him back and to give us a, a quick little updated tour of his collection and kind of catch up with Gus and see what he's been up to. That sounds good, man. And I'll tell you what, for a lot of you guys that do know uh, Gus Lopez, he is arguably absolutely has hands down one of the largest collections out there when it comes to the props, the actual movie props and costumes. And it's amazing. I love a lot of the, the things that he has. I, I remember when we were first introduced to him and had him on our show the first time, he's such a humble guy. And this is a guy that not just lives and breathes star Wars, but he's, he goes out on these excursions to all of these locations in Tunisia yeah. and all this crazy place. And he's done it several times. Yeah. And, uh, He's, he's written books. Um, he's in, in a lot of the books that are out there. Yeah. There's Steve Sansweet. Oh, yeah. And, and I, it's just the vintage collection and all of the concept stuff. And if, uh, we're going to get into a lot of it today, obviously. But if you guys haven't had the chance, uh, go back and check out our first interview with Gus. And it's really exciting to have him back on the show. So without further ado, let's bring him on, huh, Gabe? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. Good. Yeah, well, thanks for having me back on. Man, no, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah. So yeah, what, what's what's been going on with you guys? It's it's been huh? you know, over a year, I think, since we over had a year. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I've been doing a lot of stuff. I mean, um, I I retired from my job in March last year. So, oh, congrats. so I, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I I so. It's allowed me to go sort of full time into you know some of my favorite things, which is collecting and 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 traveling. And so <laughs> I've been doing a lot of both of those in the last you know in the last year. Uh, but yeah, no, I've been doing a, a lot, an ex extensive amount of travel. A lot of it Star Wars related. Been going things to like attending auctions, to going to Star Wars film locations, um, um, you know, visiting Rancho Obi Wan, um, visiting Skywalker Ranch, you know, things like that. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a great great a lot of stuff happened since last talk to you guys. Yeah, yeah, man, for sure, Gus. I wanted to ask you real quick, because I know, and congrats on the retirement, oh, yeah, but thanks. are we ever going to ever be, be well, being retired first off, <laughs> might mean you're going to be spending a little bit more money now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's kind of more, well, it's more dangerous in a way, because it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I have all this time to go shopping, whereas before, <laughs> it's like, my yeah. time is limited. Hey, but, before uh, we get, in, get into uh, the collection, yeah. Um, so we know that recently, I guess it was right after you retired, you went to Tunisia. Is that correct? Right. I went. Yeah, that's right. In uh, in April, um, last April. So it, oh, wow. it was my uh, fifth, fifth trip to Tunisia. So um, which I had not gone since 2007. So okay. what's that? 16 years. Yeah, it was yeah. 16 years since I previously visited. So quite a long has time. It, has it changed a lot? Yeah. That's what I'm going to ask it, has, you. it has changed a lot. Um, really? Yeah, it's um, a few things. One is uh, because of unfortunate, they had some terrorist incidents like, I forget how many years ago, I want to say like 12 years, it was a while ago, that scared off a lot of tourists. So tourism is really down in Tunisia, which is really sad because, yeah. you know, back in, its, back in the heyday, it was like, yeah. it was like tons of hotels, all these restaurants, so it's a lot tougher mm -hmm. Uh, on, I mean, you know, with that said, the, you know, the, the people supporting tourism there are very hungry for tourists. So yeah. it's still great to, it's actually a pretty safe place to go. It's just that tourism has just suffered. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, and that's the biggest change, but there's some positive change. Like a lot of places that when you visit the Star Wars locations there uh, used to be on like, you know, sand roads out in the desert or really mm -hmm. rough, rough driving and now there's like paved roads everywhere. I mean, you can get to the Mos Espa set, which used to be like a 40 kilometer drive out into the Sahara Desert on sand. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can set a paved road now. So there's some there's some positives, definitely. Um, uh, right. But but yeah, it was it, it is definitely very different. Oh, the other thing is that uh, Tunisia has embraced Star Wars and that's a positive in general. There's some actually downsides of that. But but um, 
they uh, some of the sites. Like, so back when I first went, 90, 98 was the first year mm-hmm. I went. Uh, I mean, very few sites had any knowledge about Star Wars. Mm-hmm. You know, the City Dress Hotel, which is the interior of Luke's house, mm-hmm. and one of the slave quarter locations, Arhadada, had Star Wars noted, but nowhere else did. But now, like pretty much every place, it's Star Wars related. Yeah. They mention Star Wars everywhere there, so so it's yeah. it's it's much well known, more well known now. Yeah, yeah. man, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've been wondering about that because you know I've seen pictures, obviously from from the nineties. And I, you know, recently you definitely see like there's some graffiti kind of like around it. And I don't know if that yeah. was always the case, but yeah. it definitely seemed like there was a little more, it was a little more tattered than, than before, but yeah. Yeah. It, they, yeah. Some of the, definitely some of the stuff is in worse shape just because of the wear. I'm yeah. actually amazed though. So, so some of it's actually pretty amazing. So mm-hmm. Moss Espa set, which was built originally in 97, right? So now it's, whatever it is, it's like, you know, 27 years old. So, um, you know, like that's still in pretty good state. It's run, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's, it, there's wear on it, but it was a set that was not, it was not built to last, you know, you know, 50 years. Right. So the fact that 27 years later is still standing and to give a contrast, like when I first visited Tunisia, it was what, uh, 22 years mm-hmm. after a new hope was filmed. Right. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, pretty much any set construction, like the dome, Luke's house, you know, that is gone and destroyed. So, so in many ways, it's actually amazing that the stuff they built has lasted. But yes, there's like Star Wars, like at City Driss Hotel, they they have like Star Wars graffiti that that the hotel staff put on, which just hmm. ruins the shot. I mean, I don't. I mean, people have told them you need to take that down. Yeah. Like it does not enhance it; it makes it way worse. So there's some of that stuff which is annoying. Yeah, and, I think- and, 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 and some of the locations have like. Uh, like there's a somebody set out in the desert, like it's on this like dried salt flat where Luke's house is, uh, the exterior of Luke's house. Somebody put like a souvenir stand that's like sitting out there, and the, it's in the middle of like the sunset shot. I mean, it's just just unbelievable that somebody would put it there. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably uh, the thing. Is like, yeah, they're embracing it, but they're probably embracing it because of the mo- right, like cause the, yeah, exactly the, the money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really- understand or appreciate what the history yeah so besides besides tunisia where else have you have you visited recently yeah let's see i mean uh, in the beginning so beginning of 2023 went to uh went to jordan um and and saw you know uh saw the like filming locations from uh rise of skywalker Mm -hmm. so and rogue one uh so that was kind of cool but that's not the only thing we saw in jordan we went to petra and you know, all, a bunch of places went all over the country of Jordan, went yeah. to Egypt, which was spectacular. Egypt is like one of my favorite countries mm-hmm. ever visited. Um, went to Israel um, and to Palestine. I mean, places that you can't now, now you can't really sightsee there anymore for a while, at least. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, that was very fascinating to see the West Bank and and, and Golan Heights and also Israel. Um, and then we went to Celebration Europe in London Oh yeah. And then, then we went to Tun- and then went to France. Went to France for several days. Then went to Tunisia. Went to Morocco. Um, <laughs> about a month, li- month later, went to Finland. Then went to the Arctic, and then came back. Went to Brazil uh, to see jaguars in the in, in Brazil, and then went to uh, UK for a while. And then my oh, wife yeah. and I went to uh, yeah. went to Spain and Canary Islands. Went to the solo filming locations in the Canary yeah. Islands. So yeah. They've been doing a lot of travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's actually what I was I was gonna pull up because I I, I know you posted some pictures on your Instagram, um, and uh, yeah, you know I was uh, I was just kind of going through them um, just briefly. Um, yeah. It looks like here's in uh, where they filmed some of the Rogue One and Rise of Skywalker scenes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's that's quite so just, cool. Yeah. It was it was amazing, and I I, I um. I had gotten a tip about a guide who had worked on the films. So he knew exactly where to go. But I had, I had also from other fellow travelers no. that had been to the Star Wars locations. They had, um, they had also helped with the GPS and all that, but because Wadi Rum is, it's interesting. It's a, it's a beautiful area. It's been used in a lot of very famous films like Lawrence of Arabia. It's, it's just a spectacular. Mm. I mean, I would visit it even if Star Wars wasn't filmed yeah. there, but um but wow. the Star Wars locations aren't in the main tourist area of Wadi Rum. It's in this whole other section. 
And so you really, I, I mean, we could have tried it on our own, but you kind of need a guide mm. to take you. First of all, it's on this, you have to drive on sand. Yeah. But second, like you're, you're driving, but also like it, the areas are pretty obscure. So, so you yeah. really kind of have to, uh, you really kind of, yeah, have to have a guide. <laughs> yeah. it. It's going to take a while before like fans figure out how to see it on their own. Uh, yeah. But it's really cool that you matched it up with some of the scenes. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at all these photos, yeah, it was pretty spectacular. Like, when you get a match like that, mm. you know, scenery like that, it's, and, and we're going over, like, a pretty wide area, like, yeah. for all these different shots you're showing. Like, but, it, yeah, there's so many. I mean, and the great thing, I love the desert locations because mm -hmm. deserts generally don't change, right? The, yeah. the, the, you know, sand dunes shift, but, like, the rocks and stuff stay the same for thousands mm -hmm. of years. So, so it's like you go back there, it's like exactly the same as when, when it was filmed. Yeah. No, What's it like, Gus, being there and just, just quiet? It's just crazy feeling, I bet, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of, yeah, no, it is. It's like some of the, some of the places, it's surreal. Uh, it like, because you really feel, I don't know, I feel, you would feel immersed in the, like, in some, like, like, for example, in Tunisia, you know, the exterior of Luke's house, like, that is a surreal, like, seeing the sunset that, you know, it's just, that is, that is incredible. Um, some of the ones in Jordan are great, uh, are amazing that way. Um, the, um, the, uh, the ones in solo that, that which is the one you're showing now. Yeah. That was really cool. What I really loved about that, especially because it's like so desolate, like there's nobody there. We're the only people, I mean, and, mm -hmm. and which led to a, it was actually a very dangerous hike. It turned out it was, it was a long story, but basically I, I hired a guide who could take me out there, but he got his vehicle got stuck in the sand. So we parked it and then um, just hiked out. And it's like, it was a long hike in the desert. And I thought we were just going to go look over the next hill to scout. And, and I didn't realize like, Oh, he wants to hike to a location. We didn't have any water. With us. So oh, we ended geez. up doing this. Like, I mean, if you can picture yeah, there you are. sand dunes that are like hundreds of feet in height going up and down these sand dunes, in the desert and it's like really hot, you know? And, and so, but yeah, once you get to the solo location though, it's like, wow, this is so amazing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so badass, Gus. Yeah. Congratulations, dude. Cause that, there's yeah. a lot, of, there's a lot that goes into getting to those yeah. places. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? Big house. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah, almost been cool. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I had not, I've been just kind of like a ranch a few times, but I had not gone in a while and I was like, when I was out in the area, I was like, oh, yeah, I, you know, just wanted to go go do a visit yeah. to Skylark Ranch. <laughs> of course, man. Oh, that's so cool. Um, well, yeah, well, if you if you wouldn't mind, I mean, we I, I'm sure you've picked up since the last time you've been here. I'm sure you picked up a lot of stuff. There's yeah. obviously been a lot of a lot of big auctions going on yes. in the last year um, where you. Yeah. you did you pick up some stuff from some of those? I'm, I'm... Yeah, I did. And in some of them, yeah. Um, like in um, Prop Store did a big auction in, in – and they did a couple of big ones in the past year. Uh, they did an L.A. one where I picked up some artwork. Um, and then they had one in London where uh, they had some of Anthony, Anthony Daniels' collection. And so I picked up a few things from that. Oh, nice. And, uh, and yeah, I'd be happy to show you those things. Let me – I'm going to yeah. just sort of walk and talk. Um, yeah. I'll look around to see if I see anything on the way that uh, that is new. And so in this area, there's really nothing new. But um, let me – let me. I'm just going to head up the stairs. Yeah. Um, let's see. It's hard to tell. Like sometimes you see yeah. things. I mean, I, I don't – you know, like a lot of my collecting, I'm not buying things like every week either. It's, it's, it's more like, you know, yeah. it's, it's, I've always been about, uh, you know, sort of – uh, quality over quantity, although I have to admit I do have a lot of quantity too. Um, <laughs> but let me, I'm gonna oh my gosh, that, that right there. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the prototype toy room. So all these are like, oh, um, God. like toys, unproduced toys, and prototypes. <laughs> yeah, that is <laughs> unbelievable, buddy. I just yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a pretty cool room. It's there's a lot and of I great. Think... Let me switch the camera. I'm gonna switch yeah. it. And Gus, I think this is my favorite. And Gus, I think last time you were on, we were just showing pictures that you had sent us. So this is a treat for us because you get to kind yeah. of walk us around and, and yeah. you know, show us your favorite stuff and, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's some, like, this is just one of, like, so basically to the background is like, I've been collecting a long time yeah. and 
when my wife and I, we bought our house, which was now bought like 23 years ago, mm -hmm. we were looking for a place that had a lot of space, but you know, like, like anything, you never have enough space for your collection. Mm -hmm. So then we added an extension. We built like a big building in the back that has mm -hmm. more stuff. So, but this is just one of the rooms in our house. So this is the prototype room. And, um, and, uh, and I can, I can actually put, let me put some lights on so you can see. So uh, Alexa, turn on unproduced toys case. This is such a privilege. And then you can yes. see the see it's the so stuff much. a little bit better. But yeah, like these are like some. I haven't shown you guys these before, but these are like some. The, for example, these twelve inch action figures. None of these were made by Kenner. These were vintage concepts of everything from like Lando to like outfits for Luke and Leia to a wind up C three PO. Um, and then these are my favorite. These are because they 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 were making. They had an action figure line you know, mm -hmm. large scale action figures, but the small figures were so popular that, you know, the, the large figures just weren't worth it as an investment for them because wow. it, they cost a lot to make and they didn't sell as much. So anyway, they canceled the line before they got to really the Empire Strikes Back in earnest. And so they had planned these three they never made. And that, you know, there's probably like three or four examples of each figure in the world, same with the boxes. And so, you know, I was very lucky over many years to assemble this, no. set of these of, of these three uh and you know, i just think they're awesome especially yeah. i mean the, the princess leia is just unbelievable like uh yeah. it's, it's incredible true. they never made it but but one of the one of the things i love in my collecting is i love collecting stuff that was um planned wasn't made as vintage but it was like an unreleased thing it's sort of exciting it's this weird what if kind of thing and i have a lot of it in this room like these play sets, like there's three micro collection uh, play sets. These are like a, it was a series in the 80s that um, Kenner made where you basically had metal figures on little plastic play sets. And these three were never made for that series. They canceled it pretty soon after it was released. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's other things here. Like there's the the White Witch, which yeah. is a vehicle, <laughs> a very legendary wow. um vehicle in uh in sort of kenner history because it was it was sort of pitched to retailers but never never released in stores of course there's yeah. the rocket firing boba fett which is sort of a classic un, unproduced toy yeah. Uh, but yeah there's a lot of that kind of stuff here you got like you know there's like a, a bunch of different micro collection you know i, I mean there's all, a bunch from java's palace they never made for the micro collection um these are all like coin prototypes from things like sketches of the coins that Kenner had to dyes to uh, tooling masters. And so a whole bunch of stuff from in the coin line. You have, there's prototypes of Jim Rumpf's mugs in here, including like the sculpt for the Obi-Wan mug. It's one of the earliest actually products were these Rumpf mugs. Um, so I have a bunch of prototypes of those, but yeah, then things like, um, things in here like some of the patterns and sculpts of, of some of the action figures one of my favorite pieces this sand crawler there's like this wood sculpture of the sand crawler and it really was the basically two which is done in two times the scale this was uh, for uh, with the process they call like making a pattern where they make a they uh, out of wood they carve out this this huge pattern and so um one of my favorite pieces but That's you asked about the new stuff i actually have one one of the new things i haven't i haven't sh actually shared until now that I picked up recently with the Anthony Daniels collection going up is the, the set of hands here. Um, and mm -hmm. I actually had a set of 3PO hands from the movies, but mm -hmm. I have a, 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 a 3PO that I've been assembling yeah. and, um, and it needed, uh, it needed a pair of hands. And so mm -hmm. like I, I had, I had a pair of hands, but they were missing all the Greeblies, like the Greeblies yeah. are the, like the things you see here and then they have because like 3PO people don't realize like how much goes into like a 3PO yeah. hand it's like not only does he have this glove you've got these three things here on the knuckles and then or on the yeah on the on the, on the back of the wrist and then you got these like rings on each mm. of the five fingers yeah. and both hands have those and so i really wanted a complete 3PO yeah. hands to go because i have a i have a 3PO that's um that I've been assembling that is, um, uh, let me show you that quickly. Actually, I can show you that really quickly. Just head up to the other room for a second. And mm -hmm. you can see a, a C-3PO yeah. here. This is yeah. a all screen used C-3PO. And you just don't, you know, they, they just don't exist in yeah. private collections. And so I've been trying to assemble basically a, 
uh, C-3PO. And so, uh, so this was sort of one of the last things I needed. Uh, so I just recently picked that up. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. And those are obviously, those are, cause we remember, I remember we were talking about the auction. And so these are yeah. Anthony Daniels personal collection. It was his Correct. stuff. He, he still yes. had. So, yeah. And, and I got very lucky with that in that I, so I was bidding in the auction and I actually didn't win the hands in the auction. I really? lost. And, 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 but I did, uh, you know, and I did unfortunately contribute to bidding him up pretty high, but yeah. I was the underbidder. On, but, you know, he had multiple sets of hands. And so oh. Propster offered me this huh. set that's, that's, that's gorgeous. And so I was yeah. able to get, get one anyway. So that worked there out pretty well. So, yeah. yeah. Damn. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So that's a pretty cool piece. Um, also yeah. for Anthony Daniels have, um, this is his chair back. Yes, chair so, back. um, so when, you know, they make those director's chair, let me mm -hmm. hold it up. I think the light is kind of weird. But yeah, um, you know, when they have, um, you know, director's yeah. chairs on set, you know, it's like this is the, the thing that they, they slap onto the back, of, the back of the chair. And mm -hmm. there's actually a behind the scenes photo. Let me show you that here he, that he signed for me. Um, so this is, I mean, here's his, he signed it here. But you can see in this photo, like in the yeah. corner, that's, that's Daniel's chair back. Um, and you can see, you know, the actors and George Lucas sitting around. Like you can see Gary That's Kurtz's incredible. chair there. Carrie Fisher's behind yeah. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford's chair is just in front of Carrie Fisher's. Um, I can't read the name there. But um, but anyway, um, yeah, it's kind of cool. You can see it actually screen matches a photo. Yeah. Behind. So, Gus, are you are you collecting now a, a lot of the director's chairs? I know you, I think you had others, but I, I, I don't love your slate collection. I remember seeing that, that was incredible. yes, yes. I have I have like uh, I have two Lucas chairs. Um, mm, yeah, I have a Christopher Lee chair, and I have a Harrison Ford chair back. Mm. And I am trying to get uh, my my goal is to get them from different movies. Try to get a sample from different movies. And then get in the, and ideally different actors. But my yeah. goal is to just get representation from different movies. And I know of, I know of a couple of chairbacks coming up for auction mm -hmm. for Force Awakens chairback and uh, and and a Return of the Jedi chairback from and they have different. The director's chairs are different in each location. That's mm -hmm. another thing that makes them kind of challenging. Like yeah. they will yeah. um, the ones they use, for example, in the desert filming for return of the Jedi are different from the ones they used in the, the Redwood forest, which are different from the ones they use in the studio at Elstree in mm -hmm. London or London. So, so yeah, so they sort of, uh, so, they, so, so for a film like return of the Jedi, there's like three, at least three different chair back designs. They use. Yeah. So, um, another piece I picked up recently I have over here is this is artwork for, um, for these, uh, these like kids books. So there's, yeah. you can actually see a whole bunch of the books here. Um, there's like six, there's actually six in the set. These are like kindergarten through like, I think second or third grade. Um, and there's just different books like on ABCs, on reading, yeah. on multiple I pages. I remember those, yeah. Yeah. And then this is the, this is the original art for it. I have it sort of in plastic. So sorry about the glare. Let me put it in. No, that's okay. Get a better, better look at it. But, um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's a beautiful, it's a wow. beautiful um, uh, painting, and what I, what I just really love about it is the um, just the the reflection. You know, you yeah, see C -3PO and R 2s reflection, which unfortunately they they cut from. Like you can see in the book, mm -hmm. you don't really see much of the reflection at all. Um, mm -hmm. They just trimmed, they just kind of cropped it, uh, but it's a beautiful painting, yeah. um, and so that was that was something that also came from prop store. I got earlier in the year. They did an auction where they had a lot of art pieces. And so I picked up, picked that up from there. Um, nice. So that was, yeah, that was kind of fun. Um, um, yeah, so those are a few of the new things. Um, I don't know if there were any others that you wanted, you wanted me to like yeah. highlight, but yeah. I, I was going to ask if you wouldn't mind kind of giving us a, a, a quick, yeah, just like a general pan of, of that room and the, the costume room that's next door. Yeah, that yeah. was incredible. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, okay, let me do that. Let's uh, hold on one second. Here we go. So, yeah, so let's get the pan of the room. So, and I'll sort of speak to what you're seeing in each of these areas. So, these are coin prototypes from an action figure coin promotion that Kenner did. Um, and this case has a whole bunch of stuff uh, from things like, um, 
like some preschool toys, one of a kind mm -hmm. toys to the rump things I showed you earlier to like a droids case that they never made to so some micro collection things and other unproduced concepts. Um, there's like a power of the force version of the A-wing, power of the force versions of the X-wing, all stuff that wasn't released. Um, wood patterns, sculpts. There's some artwork, a bunch of artwork for different unreleased concepts there on the wall. Um, yeah, that, those are not, so that's, I just can't, those are amazing. Gus, yeah. through, through all of your collection, I know you like it all, obviously, but, yeah. but it, would you say that the concept stuff is your favorite or do you like more of the movie prop stuff that you have? I mean, I think right now, probably the movie stuff is the top of my, you know, what I like the most. Um, yeah. But, but, uh, but yeah, like the, um, but you know, the, the toys are always such a key part for me of collecting. And, and that was, you know, and a lot of this stuff I built up was really over 20 years ago when I was building up the toy stuff. And I really have gotten more into the movie stuff in the last 20 years. But, uh, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I like all of it, but I really, I think, yeah, I think the original costumes and props are, are among my favorites. Uh, and then, yeah. And then I have this adjoining room. It's kind of a small room, but this is the costume room. It has like, you can see on the walls, like there's like, a, for example, there's a fitting shot, uh, a shot for the costume fitting for Carrie Fisher in the Princess Leia uh, bikini yeah, yeah, costume. Awesome. And there's, um, yeah, there's like, this is a, this is one of the answers from the holiday special, um, that costume. Oh, and really? uh, and I actually have the, um, actually have the artwork for it that Bob Mackey designed right here next to the costume. Uh, and below that I have, uh, Harrison Ford's this is the this is John Mollo's sketch of Harrison Ford's jacket from the Empire Strikes Back wow. and uh and the, the reason I have that here is because I actually have Harrison Ford's jacket <laughs> there <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to see with the glare here but no uh, it's okay but that is the Bestman jacket <laughs> so. I remember you showing us the reference on the, the stain or whatever that was on the last oh, yeah, yeah 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 and so, yeah, there's a few. So I, let me show you a few of the things here. Um, so there's, uh, sorry, I got. I know Rob, Robin, Robin Bacher was getting pretty big into the the uh, the costumes as well for a yes. while. I haven't yes. talked to her in a few, a little bit. Yeah, like she has, um, she has one of these, um, like a Bespin, Bespin yeah. guard costume, which is a beautiful costume. Um, what I love about this costume is just, this is just, you know, you, the best thing guards are just sort of background characters, but yet, I mean, they like hand embroidered all this stuff, you know, it's just, it's incredible, the detail. And it just, it really shows you like how much, like how great Star Wars is that, you know, yeah. that they go to this detail on minor characters like that, you know, and then, yeah. But here we got, you know, we got like a battle droid that's like, was from a, one that was sliced in half and went on the ground, hmm. sliced in half by a lightsaber. Yeah. Um, there's like a Naboo soldier jacket, Yoda's costume from from Episode One, um, hmm. Harrison Ford's jacket yeah. from Empire Strikes Back, a Rebel, a Rebel, a uh, female Rebel vest from Empire Strikes Back. Wow. This is the um, sorry, the glare is immense, but the, uh, this is one of the like, pan. To, this is like a Rebel uh, vest and and shirt from from the first film. Um, and then, and then we got here, we got a Tuscan, uh, from prequel, uh, Tuscan, and then Princess Leia, of course, from Return yeah. of the Jedi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's like, eh, just Princess Leia, you know, <laughs> it's just Princess Leia. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow. and, uh, and then, yeah. And then it's 3PO, which I showed you. And then yeah. here you got a rebel technician, mm -hmm. um, uh, from, yeah, from from the Yavin ceremony scene, and then and then this is a background character uh, robe. You can kind of see her. She's in this shot in um, in in oh, Mos wow. You sort of see her most actually. But yeah, so that's the costume wow. room. It's that's an a, old costume there, man. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it definitely shows its age. Did a lot. Did a lot. Guess the stories behind the story. Like I remember you like telling us that on the rocket fire boat how you acquired that, but. Yeah. Just the stories of how a lot of these things were acquired is just absolutely amazing to me. Yeah. 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 But like, yeah, you, it makes it uh, doing tours impossible almost because it's like 
every yeah everything has like a great story right, right? so it's like i remember the story you told us about the the tuscan raider helmet about how the the truck driver and how lucas just said here take the belt too or whatever and yeah or yeah he basically yeah he wanted the tuscan mask and 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 lucas said here take the belt and that's how he ended up with the belt which I now have. So yeah, it was just kind of crazy though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, th there was the Kinner story and I know you got a lot of those. And then there's the the one that you just talked about with, with the Tuscan. And then I just, the, the other one that was absolutely just like blew yep. me away was the Death Star. I just, oh, yeah. I was like, holy cow, to know that that thing sat out in a flea market as a fast trade yeah. and it's so well preserved how you did it. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean it's amazing. I mean, the such a historic piece in Star Wars Whoa. almost got thrown away. I mean, it's just yeah. it's unbelievable, actually. <laughs> so, it's amazing what did get actually thrown well, away. You know? We so we just recently had uh, Roger Christian on oh, on the cool. show, and so you know we were talking about you know his, his his obviously his work on on A New Hope and all that, and it always just kind of brought it kind of brought me back to like your collection and be like, oh my god, like. <laughs> You know, it's a lot of that stuff, like from, you know, from A New Hope, how they're just kind of grab, piecing it together with, you know, random, just junk almost, right? That they yeah. could, yeah. Find. So, yeah. No, you, yeah, you know, I mean, um, yeah, you really realize like they just grabbed parts, you know, real world parts, and then just altered them to make, you know, create this like alternate universe. And they're still doing that. I mean, they're still doing crazy. They just, yeah learned about it probably the last person to learn this but that there's um there like they for andor they used like a tricks trolls serial that came out in 2020 that had these blue oh, kind yeah. of uh like weird cereal like yeah. they looked very like it's an unusual food like and it's a blue food which yeah. i guess star wars loves and they 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 picked this particular cereal to do andor so they love taking things from the real world and yeah. but you know that just look different and so yeah, but it's it's amazing how some of the stuff's just actually kind of junky and just just yeah. the things that they found around yeah yeah no it's it's incredible i recently picked up a couple pieces from from the andor set oh, and cool. uh, and one of them is the cannon that, that's on the tank that gets blown up at the last scene that flips over oh, wow. that's a practical tank and one of the and it's a rubber it's literally here it's right here um and it's literally just a rubber like piece of oh rubber. wow yeah, yeah. And it's the one that's like on the cannon, but I guess they they must have left it outside because all the bolts are all rusty and all oh, that. Wow. Oh, they blew it yeah. up and then they just left it outside. So. Yeah, um, I did visit when I was in uh, London recently, like mm -hmm. last month. Um, some of the Ender locations in London, which was amazing, and uh, I'm going to go back in April and get together with some friends, and we're going to drive around. There's so much. What I think one of the reasons why Andor was so good was they didn't like they actually filmed on location a lot of andor whereas a lot of the other shows and movies they've been using a lot of cg and and, and so uh cgi and and so it's like you know uh, um so it's like yeah so anyway it was pretty cool that uh yeah. so anyway I, i'm really looking forward to like going to see some of the andor locations throughout the uk but yeah you're showing yeah these are some of the ones in london that we saw which were um which were amazing like these are all you know, this is the Barbican area of London, and and so really easy to see these uh, these locations on your own. You don't need; they're all in like like so there was <laughs> there are a few of them like this one that are on private property, and so uh, oh. we figured out a way to get in. But <laughs> but, uh, oh, but, uh, yeah. but like a lot of the Ender ones, you can get like that. This, for example, is yeah. Barbican. You can walk around; it's in the public public uh, access for it. Um, same with this one, but yeah, it's like so many of the Andor shots were just they just picked loca real locations, which I think makes just makes it look yeah. so real, you know, because it is actually a real place. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, how did, what did you think actually uh, about Andor? Like, uh, out of all the the new series, did you enjoy? Yeah, it's, it's definitely Andor. one of my favorites. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think my favorites are a bit unusual. Like I. Um, I uh, I liked uh, to me of, of all the series they've done. I think mm -hmm. I've liked Andor and Obi Wan the most. Mm -hmm. The two that I like the most. Um, Obi Wan often isn't the one picked out by people, but yeah. I really like that they they actually like advance the story. They actually fill in gaps of of the movie story, which I really loved, and they did it well. Like I just thought, so I really liked that series. And Andor, I just thought was excellent. It was just 
I like that they uh, were bold with it, that they they tried doing a Star Wars drama that like it doesn't have to be like lightsabers and, and battles all the time. And yeah. um, and it actually fills in lots of the backstory. And which is I mean, I, just, I thought it was and it was geared for adults. It wasn't like they didn't yeah. try to dumb it down or anything. And so, I mean, it was just so good. Um, and, you know, very well acted too. Um, really? some of the series I found. You know, there, there's a range of actors, but like mm -hmm. um, on some of the series, I didn't find the acting always that great. But like Andor was just phenomenal. Like just oh, so, yeah, I really love that series. Yeah, yeah, that's what we we were talking about that on the show as well. Like that, it's probably at least it's been my favorite for sure. Um, and it just because of that, because it's it feels like an adult Star Wars. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's a, you know yeah a drama basically. Yeah, totally. Um. Hey Gus, would you would you mind giving us another like a little tour of? of I know you're going up the stairs and there's a yeah. lot of cool stuff over there. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You want me to show you some? I was like, is that a is that an Ewok bow and arrow? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I can sh I can show you some stuff Thank on the you. stairs. Hold on, let me let me switch to the camera <laughs> thing here, and we will we will do more. Yeah, all right, awesome. Let's Thank see. you, Gus. By the way, yeah. 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 I mean, did you give me? I mean, there is stuff everywhere, right? Like, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so like. Weird. You know, these are like, like, you know, like you could spend half an hour talking about like this sketch of one of the cantina aliens or, you know, uh, Richard Miller's sketch of the of Amidala's, you know, oh. headdress from from episode one or uh, Frank Ordaz's sketch of the Return of the Jedi Death Star that he had in the shop mm -hmm. while he was building the model for the Return of the Jedi Death Star and and this like Colin Cantwell sketch of the star, early Star Destroyer. Wow, so, that's awesome. That eventually got made used that, in, that appeared in, in Andor, it, it right? In it. Was it Andor that appeared? Yeah, and uh, and then yeah, and then they had made a Hot Wheels for it because it was gonna appear in Solo, but then they ended mm. up cutting that from Solo. Um, but yeah, I also have a, a Cantwell have a Cantwell piece here. This is an early X Wing. Yes. So, and yeah, you can see some of the elements of the X-wing are still there, with like yeah. the red on the wings, and and so it still has that same concept. But um, yeah, there's like a concept sketch of um, the Kenner action figures before they were made the original twelve backs. This was one of the ideas they they played that around with. Awesome. Um, yeah, which is like a star. I've really never seen that before. That's badass. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. It's like a one of a kind. Yeah, and then I um, here. Let me. Um, that hits my heart right there, Gus. I, there's something yeah. about those. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. I show you this one? I don't remember what I showed before. Yeah, we saw that. That's cool. the serial room. Well, there's one one new thing in the serial room. This I picked up in the Anthony Daniels auction. This was this is the prop C3PO cereal box he used in the commercial. So, oh, so, so, cool. so there's actually very different. Like you know, you can see behind it. Yeah. I, have, I have a bunch of the C3PO cereals in this room, but yeah. they're all different here. But all of them have like an offer in the corner yeah. and stuff like that. Like, but this is like, you know, just a beautiful, like very nicely done box. And this was his, this was used in the commercial. Um, but yeah, let me show you. So you see, you see the cereal. I remember there. you said those had stuff in them too, right? They're still got cereal in them. Yeah. So, so I have, a, I mostly empty cereal from boxes, but I have a few that have, I have a few that have cereal inside them, yeah. Like yeah, some of these, easy. like some of these tiny. Here's like a tiny C three PO. Oh, I those. Yeah, there's even I even have one. This is really cool in a six pack of. Oh, that's funny. I mean, th these that's little so ones are cool. tough, but like, yeah. but like the the in a six pack, unbelievably tough. This is the only one I know of that's still in a in a six pack of small cereals. But that, like, for example, the contents of these cereals are still in there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let's see. So. We got, I don't know what I've shown you before, but like, you know, there's a, a Joe Johnston uh, storyboard for Star Wars from the, the first film that, it, you know, it talks about two X-Wings across the surface of Death Stars, like almost like they were plural or something at one point in the story. It's a very early X-Wing story. Yeah, uh, another great. Richard Miller, Amidala thing. You know, there's, there's just a whole bunch of stuff like the artwork. This, this, this unproduced toy artwork from Kenner from handheld electronic games. Um, this is this is a Macquarie painting. This is what's known as a um, a mat study. So they do this to when he did a, he did a bunch of the mat paintings for the films mm -hmm. and for Dega. But what they did is they take a they take a photograph on set, which is the lower part, 
And then what he does is he paints on the photograph and you can see how he's painted the trees, a very, yeah. very Lacourie-esque painting of Dagobah. And then he uses this to design how he's going to do the matte, the full-blown matte painting. But just, I love it. Color painting wow. pieces from a Corey are very rare, but I just especially loved loved this piece. It's just so so uh, much his style. Wow! Um, and then you know this is Akmina. Yeah, um, from the, the holiday, holiday special. Holiday special. Awesome. Yeah, it's the Arthur's costume done by Bob Mackey, who's like a famous you know famous fashion yeah. designer. Um, and uh, and yeah. he 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 was like. He designed all the shows in like the 70s and 80s. He was like constantly the fashion designer. And then, yeah, I don't know if I showed you these. These are like different hands oh, no. of different creatures from the films. Um, so you have like, no. you have ones like these are the Cantina Band hands. Um, and then, um, how, are like, the, how are those lasting guests? They, they, they're doing pretty good. I mean, um, the um, they're really supple, you know, and, and that. Um, so they, you know, they used like slip latex and they used foam latex for a lot of the creatures and the slip latex stuff lasts really well mm -hmm. and the foam latex, not so much, but yeah. these are slip latex. So they're, they're actually in an amazing state. Like they're, they're in really good shape. Uh, wow. there's, there's a cantina band hands. The, uh, these are Duro's, a Duro's hand from the first film, Greedo hand, uh, a cave or somebody today told me about, um, they pronounce it Kabe. I don't know how it's pronounced. Cave or Kabe, the, the little rat guy. Um, oh, yeah. The one that, yeah. like, what, that's getting yeah. the little drink. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this, this, guy, this, this guy. Yeah. Is, that one. The little. Yeah. yeah. Cave or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. His, his yeah. hand. That, that's they, it. Look, they look fantastic. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. They look. They, I, they, they've held up well. There's a Tuscan Raider hand from the first film. Oh. Wow. Um, and that's a Nemoidian hand. And then that's that's a. Plocoon hand. Um, so, wow. yeah, it's just a, a few different hand pieces. Um, yeah, I haven't seen those. Oh, look at that. I showed you this. This is. Yeah, I remember that one. That that's one's the, the best painting. Yeah. There's a, I always forget like what I've shown already. But yeah, there's. there's we could spend hours around here just showing stuff. So, like, this is. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're like. It's really hard. No, to we're make. definitely going to be respectful with you. Quick to tours like of you. our house because it's like every piece again has a story. But, but yeah, yeah. that's that's just and some examples here. Um, and my wife collects like Lilo and Stitch. So yeah, I remember. She puts um, she puts like Stitch and all these like build a bear oh, Star Wars oh, couple. You can see yeah. a whole bunch of them on cool. the stairs. Oh there. my! My kids are obsessed with <laughs> with Stitch. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's super popular with Kitty. And there's the young man we talked about. Um, yeah. And there's like a storyboard yeah. for early, early commercial and a Tuscan Raider bandolier. Um, yeah, that, that shadow box turned out fantastic. Yeah, it is beautiful how it, it just, just, and I like it with the black and white photos. Of, yeah. I don't know if you had that completed yet. Did he, Gabe? I can't remember. I remember. I think he was working on one of them when, when, on the last show. Hey, would yeah. you mind just real, real quick? Can we see the bow and arrow again, real, real fast? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, there you go. Fantastic. It's right there. Um, yeah, so it basically is a a bow and arrow and uh, and quiver. I actually, and I have I have another Ewok arrow uh, upstairs. Um, mm -hmm. The um, they made arrows. Some of the so some of the arrows are just for display, right? Like so. So this one, this one is is just a quiver with some arrows. It's, and then there's some arrows like this that are firing arrows that were designed to just actually fire from a bow. Yeah. This bow was not designed for actually launching yeah. arrows. This was just right. more of the metal. Um, but yeah, so that's yeah, pretty cool piece. I don't know if I showed you. Um, I don't remember what I showed you, but I have a bunch of stuff I got framed that's in the past year. Like, like this is this is original art for. Um, Wow. What Corey did for the Death Star, and so this is I pulled the the portfolio image and then uh, and then just added like the sketch and the, wow. you know together to frame them together. So the colors beautiful. are beautiful, Gus. You did a great job. Yeah, and, and I have like a bunch of McCory stuff here. This is like one of the Christmas cards with an Ewok. This is the original art that McCory did, and then this is the Christmas card. Uh, and then there's one up here of like. 
three PO yeah. and R two. Uh, now were those like the Lucasfilm Christmas cards? Is that correct. Like, yeah, like this is the, this is the Lucasfilm Company Christmas card here, and then this is like the color sketch by McCrory, and then the big the black and white sketches of the of for for that. Uh, um, and then other art things we got another McCrory piece here. Wow. This is um, so he he basically sketched the Death Star trench close up here, and then he used that to do. The painting, oh, wow. yeah. and uh, and he he did that in a lot of his stuff where he did black and white. Like he has like same with this. Like so, this is the uh, one of the Christmas cards with the Jawas with presents, and he first did it like this in this mm -hmm. wider aspect ratio, and then yeah. had a painting done of it, and then he decided to you know kind of narrow it. So that's when he went. So you can sort of see you can sort yeah. of see the difference here two different sketches where they take the yeah. same concepts and narrow it with fewer, yeah. you know, just compress it. And then he, he did that with the color part. Yeah. Um, great job at the framing of it. Like I, I really love even just the, the matting, like the color. Yeah. yeah. That's a great color. just makes everything just pop. You're good. Yeah, with I that do that. Then if, yeah. yeah. You know, it's a great point. And thank you for that. Like I, like, for example, if you look at this art, right, it's mm -hmm. got, the purples and the browns, right? That's what I do. I do and the same. And then I, then I pick, you know, notice that on the matting, like I'm, I'm really picky in my framing and I try to do it, things that really cause the thing to pop. And yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's just sort of done on purpose. You know, whereas like something like this, right? Yeah. This is a Christmas thing. So it's right. like the colors I use, right, will be a red, red and green mats and a gold frame. So it just sort of fits a Christmas, you know, yeah. Christmas look, you know? Um, and other things I'll show you here. These are Academy Award nomination plaques. Oh, wow. so I have I have four of them. I have I yeah, have I two from one from Star Wars, one from Empire, and I have one from Raiders and one from uh, Tem Temple of Doom wow. here. So I don't collect much non Star Wars, but but I you know no. you can't, can't turn down an Academy Award plaque. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then how do, like, you, how do you acquire those guys? it's a that's a great question because it's like you think who on earth would ever let go of one if you won one of these but yeah, but the reality is people sell everything right so yeah. they, they go up for auction they go private sales yeah um you know so yeah a few of them have sold you know it's just it's just it's it's weird but it does happen it is true about like you know for music awards as well that happens too like with gold records and grammys and stuff like that people sell that stuff so yeah this is a grammy nomination plaque for for miko's star wars and then i also have a bafta nomination plaque for star wars here so yeah so four oh. oscar one bafta one grammy um would love to find one of the emmy plaques at some point because <laughs> <That'd be cool. laughs> uh, they've also won emmys but uh but yeah that's some of the stuff here and of course here yeah, is is the Here's the Death Star again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I think that would look really good, Gus, in my room. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come I've on, dude. I just finished this room for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, great. Yeah. That's all. What, what is that? What was that coin behind you as you were coming up to your oh. left? I like okay. yeah. immediate. Right, oh, like behind me. Yeah, guys. Yeah. I just feel like you don't don't sit down, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, over I mean, like as you were walking so up, you're talking was, about you're, you're talking about where? Um. So if you go down a little bit, yeah, it's right behind that wall. So uh, on the other side, on the right side. Oh, oh, I know you're talking about this here. Yeah, that. Okay. Like, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's a Macquarie piece. So, um, basically. Ralph McQuarrie designed this cast and crew bu belt buckle uh, based oh. on the Adam Walker. And this was going to be a crew gift for the Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. um, and he, this is the original drawing he did. And, you know, you have like different, he's got some thumbnails and different logo designs and stuff on this. And then he did this color sketch. Well, mm -hmm. you know, it was never made as a crew gift, but for uh, celebration four in, mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, Los Angeles, I think it was Celebration 4, they did a limited edition belt buckle. I think they made like, I don't know, 200 of these or something like that based on that design. So this is the nice. this, is, this is the limited edition buckle they sold at Celebration. And then this is the original art that was really the inspiration for it in 1980. And you see there's some differences, right? Like 
the original um the original like had for example the original said 1979 which is the year they filmed it and then it has a, a walker on the left side whereas mm -hmm. you know the the final the final buckle looks like this yeah. um, the one that they they made as a collectible which came yeah. out later they put 1980 the year the film came out so yeah so that's what that is but yeah there's there's all sorts of fun stuff here there's um right below it this is a postcard from uh alec guinness from tunisia when he was filming star wars and he actually talks about the filming on this postcard he sent and you're probably wondering like how do i have yeah two <laughs> and a friend of mine uh you may know chris trevis who's also a star wars artist and uh and replica prop guru mm -hmm. um he he spotted on ebay and told me, hey, that same postcard you want in an auction? The they actually have a blank one on eBay, so I bought one of these on eBay. So anyway, it's a vintage Tunisia postcard from Tazur in Tunisia, wow. and so I, I framed it together so you can see the front and back. Perfect. That's awesome. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah. And speaking of Alec Guinness, then there's also this, which was when I bought a bunch of the Rumpf pieces. So Rumpf was the guy who sculpted all those those three mugs. He mm. had sent a uh, he had sent samples of the mugs to all these. Uh, Star Wars actors and so I have actually autographed letters and photos that he got from uh, that he sent you know, so Alec Guinness, Mark Hamill, Anthony Daniels, Peter Mayhew all sent them to uh, to Rumpf to thank him and so this is Alec Guinness's letter to Jim Rumpf thanking him for the Obi-Wan mug um, and a little note that he sent to Jim Rumpf and then and then to so, get you know, like Alec Guinness Star Wars stuff no really hard to come by like there just isn't a whole lot of uh of stuff that uh that he signed that he really like attributed to star wars because he obviously had a vast career and did a right. lot of different things but like, yeah. yeah so that's just a few this is what i mean by like all over yeah, the house yeah, yeah. stuff like this like i mean yeah. like, here i'll give you another one that's right nearby so check this thing out so you probably won't be able to place this i don't remember if i covered this last time but no uh, this thing okay you know, you probably no almost nobody ever guesses what it is, right? Hmm. Like, it does. It looks Star Warsy. I mean, it definitely has yeah. that look, right? But it's like hard to place. And the answer is up here, and you can see on the wall behind. Me, oh, what? There's actually two of them on both sides, but yeah, it's like it's wow. A so it's a set dressing from that scene. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of, oh, we would be on it if you would join cool. us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is really cool. Hey, Gus, I was going to ask you because yeah. I, you know, the one thing, do you also collect like posters and like, do you? I do. Rare posters. Yes. You do. Okay. I have, uh, yeah, I could, I could, t I could show you some of those. I don't, uh, it'll take me about two minutes to walk over there, but I can show you that if you want to see them. I can't remember. Do you, do you have another connection you? just for posters? Is that what? Oh, I have, I have another building that we, an extension we added. That has uh, that has several rooms. Thank you guys. For All right, process. here we go. So I saw the Don Post. I saw the okay, so this post. is this here. Let me do a wide angle here so you can really see this. Appreciate this. This oh, is wow. the um, cast and crew room. So this mm -hmm. is only stuff that was like really available to the cast and crew. Um, so we got mm -hmm. things like you know um, caps. Wow. and just things like invitations mm -hmm. um the, the holiday cards patches mm -hmm. uh you got you know crew shirt t-shirts and i have a lot of crew t shirts oh, you know just add the cool really cool ones like i have so many t-shirts you see them a lot of them are packed they're kind of packed solid in these cases but wow. you know i put some of the nicer like blue harvest and yeah. you know the a, a couple of the major ones yeah and, in 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 cases um and then yeah the norway the norway suits wow. here um and that's an original one not not one that's that original recent yeah. not, not the one from columbia yeah and then i have you can't i have them in these things but let me show you the this is the <laughs> the, the press version of the norway suit so yeah, it's a, cool. you see it's like darker than yeah the crew version um and then this is the uh this is the executive version of the executive one has this like collar you know that's different than oh wow yeah they made these for like fox executives had these and then 
I have another one here too. Jim Jim Bloom was the associate producer. His is here, but um, oh. yeah, I mean, but you can just see there's like so much. I, cast and crew stuff. I even have some piled up that I haven't processed yet. <laughs> like these are from like the recent shows and the decent movies and yeah. stuff. The um, jackets, like these are just all jackets from yeah. the cast and crew. So they, I mean, that's the cast and crew room. And then wow. out here we got like Hildebrandt paintings, um, wow. things like that. Like got golden, platinum record awards, um, which I have like can see i'll show you the posters in a second but here's a whole bunch of, like the golden platinum record awards like we got loads of them here like on wow. both sides of the <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah um yeah and this is the section that you said you built later right just to kind of accommodate correct yeah because we we uh we added we, you know like every collector you run out of space yeah. so like this is the food room and the cat and the store display room. So you have really obscure stuff like dog chow, dog chow stickers wow. from Australia, um, to like flan, a flan from um, yeah. from from Spain, um, TV dinner from the U.S. It's really obscure, um, you know. Uh, yeah, just things like the Yuppies from Colombia. They did these like, <laughs> these pretty cool uh, premiums that uh, came in. The UP, uh, uh, like the chips, um, and then they had um, these from Spain and Portugal. These, these oh. actually, things like you know, wow, drinks are in this display case. You have all these things. These are from Sweden, like soda from Sweden, high C from the U.S. Bottle caps from Japan, uh, bottled with bottles with caps from Canada. Um, wow. you know, ice cream, you know, ice cream and cheese. The dairy cabinet has like. The milk and the yogurts and the and the and the there's like this this is obscure that milk canister with that yeah. ring you see that's from England and it had like this uh, like little ring that went around the milk bottle um, for Empire Strikes Back and of course the wow. you the, the cheese yeah. ice cream things you know like and then I have store displays on this side of the room so you have like um, so, some of the different. Um, like yeah, just like the, like the Oral B toothbrush display, a whole bunch of the Kenner displays in oh here. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, but this is a really cool display. The the one action figure one with the coins, which is like a big bin display, and I have other displays stacked here, like some of the Japanese ones and wow. collection one. Um, yes. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my like, gosh! TV viewer one and R two. Plus or twos. So yeah, a bunch of displays in this. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some great stuff can here. Can I, can I, I'm sorry, Gus, can yeah, I go for it. Yeah, the, the other ones real, real quick? The, the first ones that you were showing on those displays, the card yep. displays, I'm sorry. Which one was yeah, it? Yeah, keep going, keep going, the, the original ones. Yeah, keep going. Oh yeah, these. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. look at that. Yeah, that's the original 12-back display. Man, that's, 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 that's the first action figure display. Jeez, that's in perfect condition too. Yeah, yeah this one's beautiful. really good. Yeah, um, I've been wanting that for a long. And actually, sorry, I, I misspoke. That isn't. This is the one with the Boa Fett offer. This is actually the first twelve. Mm. Yeah, the first, the twelve go. back display is this one. And uh, what is that in there? What, what's oh that? yeah, so there's um, there's this like um, yeah, this is like an Ewok from Italy with glue sticks. They oh, bundle Ewok. Out figures with glue sticks it's pretty obscure oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah after the 12 back one they did the 20 back with boba fett offer and that's what this is um and then yeah i even have like a theatrical like Coke yeah. i remember the display yeah you can get soft drink for 55 cents you know uh <laughs> so, that is so cool it's pretty old uh thank you thank you for going back on that yeah, 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 no problem. And then, yeah, let me show you a couple. Oh, yeah, I was showing you these. These are like a poster, Coca-Cola poster from Japan. Um, and then there's like one, a Kenner one that had like a food, a Coca-Cola promotion. Um, okay, and then down the hall, um, you know, artwork like this is, while I'm unlocking this door, this is artwork from one of the um, pieces of furniture where they did like stuff with like the Ewoks and the droids for furniture. Um so that's like the painting that they use for that. And then in here, this is 
Um, figure, figure. Oh. This is the, the vintage room. So, yeah, it's like you can kind of see. Jeez. Yeah, I don't know if we I don't know if we saw that this last time. I don't Yeah, there's there's so much stuff yeah. to see. Yeah. yeah. So uh yeah, oh you get goodness. kind of an idea here. Um, yeah. Like, and uh, is there like a, a kind of like scheme to your your collecting of these? Like were you like Yeah, yeah. I mean well specific? like this is stuff I've picked up ages ago, but like basically, yeah. you know, you know, the original action yeah. figure toys especially are so sort of classic, right? So what I did was in this room, I have, they're in order, basically. You have, like, basically, I have the early bird set here. Effectively, well, the actual early bird set is here and in the store display. I have the I have my original set as a kid. I have a sealed set, and I have the, the early bird store display in a mailer box. But um, anyway, I have the early bird action figures front and center, but they go chron kind of chronologically, like you see the first 12 back action figures and then it goes to the 20 backs with the cantina guys and the droids and then it goes to boba fett which was the 21st figure and then you get to the empire strikes back so it's sort of in order of the films and it goes sort of left to right so you, you have all of them sort of in this room and it gets down to droids and ewok cartoon you know yeah. the cartoon series down here power of the forest cartoon all that's kind of post-movie stuff. Yeah. Um, and then on this wall, you get all the vintage toys. So you have the themes are like Star Wars here. Mm -hmm. And then Empire Strikes Back here. Yeah. And then you get Return of the Jedi. And uh, and then, you know, yeah. Heart Force droids all in here. Then I put the foreign stuff up here. No. Gus, I know you've been a, a, a collector since like us, like when I was a kid, me and you were about the same age. Yeah. Did, is a lot of that stuff your originals or, or, or is that all loose? Yeah, I mean, some of it is, some of it, uh, most of it is not, is not my original. So um, like, um, like I didn't save things in package as a kid, right? Like, so I, uh, I, um, I went back and got the stuff in the nineties and that's when I put together a lot of this part of the collection in the nineties yeah. was when I was buying local, there was a time when you could still buy local collections and, yeah. and find like most of my carded figures, hardly anything in my collection is graded. Like a lot of people get the toys graded. Now I bought most of my collection before grading existed, yeah. but I was very picky on condition. That's why a lot of them look, Pretty nice. Can we, just, can we see your 12 backs real quick? Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at that one. Um, yeah, so here are the 12 backs. So, like, here's. Um, oh, yeah, and they're unpunched. And yeah, some are unpunched. I was, I've not always been picky about whether they're punched or unpunched, but you can see they're, yeah, they're yeah, in yeah. pretty good state. Um, I'm opening some of the doors here just to give you an idea. Like, here's my both, both versions of the Jawa. Yeah. Um, and they're both in beautiful condition. There's a 3PO. There's also the Takara 3PO back oh, there. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So, um, and then you have over here. Sorry, I'm opening the cases while I do this. But no. you have uh, small head and large head Hans. There are two versions of Han. Yeah. And then you have uh, Stormtrooper, Death Squad Commander. Um, and then... then you're getting into the 20 backs here. But here's the Tusken Raider. And then I, I sort of... Over here was Vader and Obi Wan, mm -hmm. and then you can see back there the Takara Vader there. Oh, um, yeah. So yeah, but anyway, those are the twelves, uh, the twelves, and then I have the twenties. Like, do, yeah. do you have a favorite action figure? Or do, and also, do you look at that? That Boba Fett's very rare. This is one of my favorites. Actually, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, Obi Wan back Boba Fett is gorgeous. You know, it's just such a beautiful action yeah, figure. Just the layout of that was amazing. Um, but yeah, um, very cool. Jeez. Yeah. So you have? Do you remember your first action figure? I do. Yeah. I mean, the first one was. Uh, I mean, the first one were, were these four. <laughs> like not. Yeah. A yeah. A lot of people got them. About a set yeah. of them. Yeah. And I got. I got them. I got them out of this set. You know, out of the early bird set. That's oh, there I, you go. Very yeah. cool. So uh, yeah. So yeah. So yeah. And yeah, as I said, like my, I have. Um, and there's an early bird set back here. That's a sealed one. And my my original one that I kept from childhood like i have back there as well it opened oh, that's cool. uh, so um yeah, yeah and i'll show you there's more stuff in this building um mm -hmm. let me show you some I remember that punching back it's cool i saw that yeah 
And then this is like the one of the only replica things I still have. Like when and Pam puts her stitch yeah. on top, of it. but basically it's the it's the Don Post. Don Post. That. So when I started, which number, which number is he? Oh, let's see. I don't know. Um, I can't even read that. Me... Uh, yeah, hey, that's... better. Yeah, you might be able to read it. Is that one, two, um, two three? That might be one, two, three. Wait, what's yeah. it say? One, one two. Yeah, I had number five. Five. Wow, that's impressive. Oh, one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I used to have more replica stuff, but when I started to collect originals, it just sort of got confusing. Yeah. So I thinned out. You know, really got pretty much got rid of all my replica stuff, yeah. but I kept this because this was so amazing. <laughs> just, yeah, I never get that thing. Yeah. But, but you asked about posters. Yeah. Which, Oh, there they are. Yeah. I don't have many posters, but I do have I mean, many that are out at least. Yeah. But, um, you know, I have this one from Mexico. I just like some of the, some of the foreign posters. Yeah. Um, this one from Mexico from the, some of them have just such beautiful artwork. Um, yeah. So I really like that one. And Imperial Contour Apaca was a, just a cool when they did the look like that. And then of course the birthday poster yeah. is a classic. You know, because it uses no, the action figures. And... I have mine going down the stairs too. It's fine. <laughs> you gotta have the revenge yeah. poster, yeah. Of course, the revenge poster, which is also a classic. You know, yeah. um, for, for you those know, of you that are watching that sees that the, the one year anniversary, what they're saying a lot of times nowadays, a film will come out and it'll be out for three weeks or for a month, and then it'll be out on DVD in six weeks. Well, Star Wars was actually in the movie theaters, and I was actually. It was probably about nine months after it was released that I finally saw it, but it was still in the movie theaters for a full year. Wow. Which is amazing, right? Like by any film standard today, you know, yes. none of them do that. Like stay in a theater a year later. And then here we got um, the, oh, Mylar, the, the early wow. Mylar poster, which I love. You know, just, I've never uh, seen that one before, Gus. They've got the logo, the very early yeah. logo. Um, was that, the, that was a movie poster, huh? Yeah, that yeah, was the yeah, team. This was, uh, forget the exact yeah, that's what I mean, the theater like poster. It's like a, one of the early advanced posters, but basically yeah. it was to, is coming to your galaxy this summer. It was, you know, before the release of the film and before they finalized the logo. Yeah, it's um, real disco looking, you know? Totally. <laughs> and then this is cool. This is one of the, one of, probably my favorite of the Polish posters. Like, oh, you wow. can't even tell it's Star Wars. It's like an yeah. impression back um, poster and, uh, and you know, I mean, you can see things there, like the cast, you know, is named yeah. there, and you can you can see it's a film by Irvin Werschner, as they call him <laughs> Werschner. Uh, uh, but like, yeah, it's, it's from Poland, from from the original uh, release and, of Empire. And then I have other Polish posters here, like um, this is a little tight in here. Let me let me go wider angle; they can see these better. Um, so this is the um, this is the C three PO. Um, bird dropping poster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like from Poland for the first film. A really cool poster. And then yeah. uh, another classic is the um, Vader. If you can see it here, there's a lot of glare. But the Vader exploding head poster. Now, let me go up the stairs a bit. Back. <laughs> so you can see it at an angle the Vader exploding yeah. head poster, which is wow, uh, kind of cool. They just I've never it. seen that. Wow, that's all I've yeah. never seen that before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's an obscure, also a poster from Poland. Like Poland had the best posters. Um, it's like they're creating their own story or something. Yeah. And then there's like this one from Japan that's really cool, where they took the smokestack nebula and put like R2 and 3PO. Yeah. From that. There's this one from Spain, which is the a teaser poster for oh. the first movie from Spain. Um, and then I got, I don't really, I'm not an autograph person per se, but. I have mm -hmm. this poster, which over the years I just had different actors yeah. sign it when I met them, you know. So wow. um, there's some really good ones in here. I mean, you know, you can see like, yeah. you know, Kay Freeborn. Who, I met Stuart and Kay Freeborn that had tea at their house in 2005. And so wow. they got me to sign my poster when I did that. Or yeah. you know, here's Ralph McCory um, wow. and Irvin Kirshner, of course, Mark Hamill. Yeah. Uh, Ben Burt and uh, wow, nice. Thurman and Joe Johnston. Um, 
Gary Kurtz. Uh, yeah, I love that that you're getting, you know, because a lot of people get just the actors, but I love the yeah. fact that you got a lot of, you know, the the more important people. And sometimes, in my opinion, well, the behind the scenes people, yeah. yeah. And then you got uh, Carrie Fisher there. So yeah, a whole bunch of them. Peter wow. Bacon. Dave, I'm so glad you mentioned the posters. Jeez. Yeah. Well, I, I I thought about it because I I was I really appreciate the way Gus mats his and frames his stuff. So I thought about I was like, oh, I wonder if you have any posters because I, I didn't think I'd seen it. And again, you, you do such an amazing job, like that that Revenge of the Jedi poster. Oh, that's beautiful. How you did you know the the red around it? Looks Look great. at that. Yeah. So this. Uh, to give you an idea, I went to super wide angle here. So these are huge theatrical posters to give you an idea yeah. of scale. So look at this guy. This is a matte painting from Empire Strikes Back. Wow. So this is, this is, they use this in the animating the Hoth battle. So they would put the miniatures in front of this and, mm. uh, and they, that's how they would do the special effects for, oh, <laughs> for well, like the, the that background that. Uh, <laughs> for it. Yeah. Sure. Really finger the way. But yeah, it's a really cool painting because from this angle, it looks like a photograph which is what yeah. you want, right? When they do a wide angle, you want it to be sharp. Yeah. But then when you go up close, it's really blurry, like an impressionist painting. Yeah. So it, it looks like it's really great for the, um, it's really great for achieving the effect of the depth of field that you, know, yeah. you want to do on, a, on something that's like, you know, uh, when you're, so they just basically had a backdrop and then had the adit walkers and the snow speeders in front of it. But this yeah. is what ILM had. And this is, part of a much larger painting. They actually, this is all the, the only part that was saved from the painting really? because the painting was, yeah, it was like a massive paint. It was about, you know, I'd say twice the size. So it was, but they, this is what was saved by one of the people. So just love this you, Were you able to find it in the, in the film at all? The background? Oh yeah, yeah, it's very easy to match to the film. Yeah, it, there's a lot of scenes where you see this thing in the background. Fantastic, guys. So yeah, so, yeah, so that's the other building. I mean, we have, Again, yeah. I mean, everything has a story. Yeah. Like, what? Like, hey, guess like, what's in the attic? <laughs> I know, right? What's that, sorry? Oh, that's cool. This, yeah, this is from, this hung in the offices of ILM. This was thrown in a dumpster. Basically, it was, uh, um, it was, they had a, a photograph of the, of Luke on Tauntaun miniature that they had sitting in their Oh, my God, it's office. a kid. That's yeah. a kid. And right next to it, I have Phil Tippett's, um, White angle is Phil Tippett's sketch of oh, wow. the Anton. So like you can see, they even they even had him do like you know the bone structure, and the legs. Um, yeah, it's all got to be real. It's crazy, and it's like these are all realistic things, you know. Yeah, they're trying to make it like a. Yeah, and then keeping with the theme, I also have here. This is Phil Tippett's sketch of of Luke in, in the outfit that he oh. rides. That's when he's riding oh. the tunnel. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. You know, Frank Ordaz's a sketch of yeah, print sketch for one of the matte paintings, and yeah, there's a Macquarie, there's a Macquarie skiff mm. uh, concept sketch. Um, yes. There's some no. Dave Dorman, Dave Dorman a comic book cover art. Um, that's one of his paintings, and then there's another one here, so Empire's End oh, comic. Wow. Uh, yeah, so. so but you can see, like, it, this gets back to the theme about, like, the matting, right? Like, yeah. Like, here you get these, like, reds and purples and oranges and stuff. So yeah. I, I just do a pretty bold, uh, bold matting where you've got the pink yeah. and the red and, and the, the white just helps, you know, really make the piece yeah. pop. So, yeah. Damn, very cool. Um, Gus, I, I was going to ask you because it, it popped up on my Instagram today. And yeah. uh, it reminded me because we had um, – Lawrence Noble on the show in, you know, talking about, you know, the Yoda and all that. Do you have yeah. one of those little, the little statues that were given to it for the, you know, the Star Wars club? You know, the, the... I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't have, I don't no. have the club statue. No. I have seen them before. I'm trying to see. I do have the, I do have this one. Um, here, let me zoom in on it. Oh yeah. That's um, the one from Lucasfilm, right? That's the Lucasfilm one. Yeah. I have the Lucasfilm version of it. Yeah. And that came in that box there. That yeah, I, 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 I got to tour Lucasfilm a, a couple months ago, and I, I ended up picking one of those up. They had. One oh of wow! Them. Yeah. They, are they back then? They're back for sale because I remember. They had, they, yeah, they had them, and then they were out. They sold them. And out, then, yeah, because they were doing them in runs of twenty five until the one hundred and fifty ran out. And oh, okay. I, okay. I, I picked up the last one of the one hundred and twenty five. So the last, the last twenty five 
were about to to show up. I did not know that. So that's how they do it in runs of 25. So yeah, so basically, yeah, those are amazing. I've seen the, um, on that one that you're talking about that was uh, from the 80s. I think it was from the 80s. Yeah, um, it might've been not early 90s, but late 80s, early 90s. There's a there's a dealer on, um, a, a dealer, he's a scammer on eBay that took it. There was an old e- eBay listing for that Yoda. Mm-hmm. And and uh, this scammer keeps... Uh, keeps taking uh oh, photos of, of that old listing and relisting them so i have ebay searches that turn this up every so i see the yoda statue appear on ebay like mm-hmm. about once a month or so and yeah. every time it's this scammer who's like mm-hmm. doing fake ebay listings and has hijacked somebody else's ebay account so oh. uh so that's how i actually report him yeah. to ebay and they take down the listings right away but unfortunately it's not for it was not a yoda statue is for sale it's one that uh that they're that that he lift he basically this guy went through old listings that sold for a lot and so at some point on ebay one of those sold um and and then and went for a lot and so this guy saved it so it appears on ebay all the time but it's a fake basically a fake listing uh, yeah that's guys yeah. i wanted to ask you real real quick so obviously yeah. we know you're known in the community for a lot of this the originals and the vintage yeah concept what where do you are, are you collecting anything at all? Are you like on the new stuff that's the new license stuff that comes out? Do you see something and still get it, or, or do you kind of stick to the old school stuff? Um, no, I mean I get some new stuff. Um, so I get uh, if it's uh, if it's like cast and crew related, but you know they're within moderation. So a yeah. lot of the cast and crew stuff now people want way too much money for it, and it's, it's I think it's sort of the phenomenon of social media where you have yeah all this competition for the, you may have observed this before in other collecting genres and so on, but social media has changed it in that a lot of people compete to be the first kid on the block with the thing to show it on social media. So cast and crew stuff, I, I do pick up from the new movies, but people have really elevated the price of that stuff, especially when it first hits and then it drops down. So sometimes it's actually better to get it a few years after the film or TV show. And then I get the cereal boxes when they do cereal promotion. That's about it on new stuff. Um, what about that? Did you were you did you participate in the Greg Gene auction or were you did you watch it? I did. I watched it. I mean, I did. Uh, yeah, I mean, there were only a couple Star Wars pieces in it, and and I knew I had friends who were bidding on those, so I I didn't I didn't bid on anything in the auction, but um, but um, but yeah, I, there were some great pieces in that auction. I mean, the non Star Wars stuff was amazing. I mean, well, the Star Wars stuff was amazing. I mean, a stormtrooper costume and the X wing, yeah. like wow, you know. Yeah, it's crazy how elevated yeah. prices have gone, right? Especially yeah. in that option, me and Gabe talked about how crazy it, it was. That that one was like on a whole other level. Of yeah. Hype, I guess, you know? Yeah, it was. It was amazing. Like that. That was like, oh my god! Like the, the quality of stuff. But like, I mean, he only had like two, two or three Star Wars things, or maybe there was a couple minor lots of Star Wars. But the non-Star Wars stuff was like, holy cow! Yeah. He had this collection. It's like, um, yeah. you know, just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, man. Well, Gus, we want to be obviously respectful. You know, we, we were yeah. you gave us a, an extensive tour, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, sure. Of course, be respectful of your time. We'd love to have you back on, though. And and yeah, yeah happy to do it again. Yeah, there's all this stuff to talk about. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Well, yeah. Gus, thank you so much for that, and congratulations on your retirement. And oh, yeah, thank I, you. you know, uh, I, I really get excited when I'm looking through, you know, you, your your stuff pops up on like Instagram and stuff. And I'm like, oh, man, that's so cool. Yes. So, yeah. So thank yeah. you for sharing your collection with with us and with the world, um, because it really is. It's you know, you're it's it's a museum. You're, you really are, you know, kind of a, a historian here at this point. So really appreciate it. Yes. Happy to do it. So, yeah. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to, to, to slide out by just saying Gabe kind of took the words out of my mouth. It's a, you're you're a very humble human being, you know, and I love your love for Star Wars. But uh, most importantly, you allowing you know all of our, our viewers to come into your private collection. I mean, and see this stuff that would normally never get seen is really really awesome, man. So thank you so much on behalf of everybody that. Watches Collection Wars. We're known a lot for showing these really nice high-end 
collections. And it isn't to, to brag or say how big or how expensive something is. It's just the love of Star Wars. Yeah. And you've proven from the very beginning, you know, your love for Star Wars. I mean, for heaven's sake, you're traveling to every single location out there. You got, you're very well respected in the community. And Gus, thank you so much, buddy. It's awesome. Yeah. No, thanks. No, definitely appreciate that. No, yeah, and I agree with what you said about like, you know, I mean, all of us have done this for a long time and we have our specialties and so on. But like, I think it's very hard for someone coming new into it to understand that it isn't, yeah, it isn't just like, hey, like we have these big collections, let's show it off. It's like, you know, there's so many, so much, so many years and so much passion has gone into whatever the person does, whether they're into like replica props or whether they're into like the comic books or whatever, you know, it's, 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 it, it is sort of a reflection on all that they've built up in their, in, in their Star Wars fandom. And, and, you know, and, and those of us, you know, we, we, uh, we celebrate it through some of the stuff that, that we own. So anyway, but yeah, like it's, it's, for me, it's been a yeah. long, long journey over many years that have, so, it, you know, it, yeah. it, when you show all these Thank things, you're we like, how the hell do you get all this stuff? But it's like, you know, it is, yeah. I mean, since we last yeah. talked, I actually haven't picked up that many pieces. They've been significant yeah. pieces, but there's a few, there's only a few pieces I've picked up since we last talked. One thing before, before we, we let you go this evening, are you working on, I know you've been involved in a lot of different publishing books out there. Are you yeah. planning on doing anything uh, with, like personally with your collection? Yeah. Yes. The answer is yes. Uh, definitely. Um, nothing to announce, but early stages of uh, another book idea that, that I'm working on with Duncan Jenkins, uh, but we'll, we'll, when we're ready at a point where we know we're going to actually pull it off because it's still yeah. early days, we'll, we'll definitely announce and, and, and share. But yeah, I'm planning to do more, more collecting books. Um, Good. That's, that's awesome. Plan. It's been a few years since you've done them. And, um, and I'm now I have a lot more time on my hands. So I, I am in a better position to work on, on books. So, yeah. Really cool to be able to document all these things. And, you know, it's now in the books with us and, you know, I'm going to be slow moving back through this, Thing and stopping and pausing and looking at those, <laughs> yeah. those twelve inch figures, damn! Yeah, I just the yeah. stories behind those. It's incredible. But get, yeah. yes, thank you so very much for your evening, and now uh, we look yeah, forward yeah. to having you. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me on yeah. again. Thanks yeah. again, guys. I right. appreciate. It. Bye. Good night, everybody. You're all clear, kid. Now let's go home.